we are back working on this guitar, the Flying V that we tore down um, back in the summer. Um, we had a couple months without working on it at all. So I think in the last video we took the fretboard off of the old neck and we had to install a truss rod. So we got a truss rod, we're going to install the truss rod in this neck today and then we're going to glue the fretboard back on. Um, but I still got some glue on the back of the fretboard, so I got to take a uh, piece of sandpaper and kind of sand it down, get it kind of smooth a little bit. But we're going to do that, get the truss rod installed. On the body, it's almost ready to go. We're going to put a jack hole in down here. And I think that's about it. There might be one other thing I got to do to this. We'll see if we get to that today. But first of all, we're going to go ahead and install a truss rod. So this is the truss rod. This is the dual action truss rod that we're putting in. And, um, just slide right in. Make sure it's back far enough. It'd be a nice snug fit. So that's the nut end and then you got the back end back here. So now with that end, this fretboard's ready to be glued on. So that's going to go on um, about right there, where that's going to go at. There's going to be a little bit of a lip hanging off the back right here. We can see that. Yeah, right there. A little bit of a lip hanging off. This is a 25 and a half inch scale, and this is a 20, what, 21 or 22 um, frets in this thing. So we're going to glue the fretboard on. And then we're going to put a binding channel around this fretboard. So we're going to put binding. We got binding around the pickhead here, and we're going to put binding around this fretboard. But I'm thinking maybe I think I screwed up my binding a little bit here. I might take some of this binding off. This piece here has got to come off. This piece might be all right. This piece here has got to come off. So I'm going to go ahead and pull these two pieces off. And I think this side over here is good. Um, I think I can work with that. It looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and pull them two them two pieces off here. And then um, we'll come back through, we're ready to put new pieces of binding on. We're going to sand the back of this, we're going to do this next, sand the back of this thing, get it smoothed up. And we're ready to glue the fretboard onto the neck. On the back side of this fretboard, um, whenever we took it off, we've got some dry glue on here. And then there's some, I had some double stick tape because I made a jig for this fretboard. And I got a little bit of the double stick tape left on there. So I just got to go through and sand it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of um, 150 grit sandpaper and just go through and lightly sand it. Nothing. Nothing extreme. Basically, I just want to get the roughness away from it. It don't have to be all gone just so the roughness is gone. There's, there's a lot of roughness right here. This is pretty smooth in here and down in here and down here there's some roughness. So I'll hit it with some 150 grit and then come back through maybe with some 220 and smooth it up a little bit. But I'm not taking, as you can see with my sanding paper, I'm not taking none of the um, wood away, just the glue. So I'm not going to change the, the shape of the, the back and then take away the flatness or anything like that. I'm going to take away some of this glue and stuff. So that's pretty much done. Um, I got probably 90% of the stuff off. Got that tape residue off there. And um, it's basically ready to be glued onto the neck. Um, so now we're gonna go ahead and pull these pieces of binding off. Um, we might run this through the, the, the uh, router again to redo these channels. Um, we'll see, I don't know how bad it's gonna be. Or we just might take a piece of sandpaper or a small chisel or something and go through and just kind of clean them up. But let me get these things pulled off. On this binding here, um, I just got it acetoned on, um, I believe. I don't think I glued it on. I think I acetoned it on. So what I'm going to do is just take a razor knife. I should be able to get back behind in between the wood and the binding itself. Take my blade down there and start peeling it out. It should peel off around there. Take this piece off. Um, I'm not sure about this piece yet. But this piece is definitely coming off. This is probably the worst piece. This one's definitely coming off. So with this piece and this piece for sure, possibly this piece. So. 
I've done this before and it usually works out pretty good so basically you gotta get down in behind it with your blade and just kind of peel it out like so just run your blade along the edge So I end up taking off the long piece, this piece here, because on the end piece here, this one here, I tried to get my knife in between there and I just couldn't get my knife down inside there. So um, I made more sense to go ahead and pull this piece off, then when I got this piece off, down inside here I can get my knife and I just end up peeling that off there. So this side's still on, I'm going to try to leave this side on, hopefully it won't take it off. Um, but we got this, now I don't know if I can reuse this one or not, this is from the long side here. Um, I don't know, probably not, probably just put a new piece on, and um, that'll do it. So what I'm going to do now, what the problem was with the binding was down here, I don't think the channel was deep enough, because uh, my binding stuck um, way out past, and ended up, sand up a lot of, I had, ended up sanding a lot of the binding down to get it flush, and when I did, it was real thin compared to the other ones, where this one's nice and thick. This one was like half the size, so my, I don't think my channel is deep enough. On this one here, it was good, on this one here, it was good. Um, well, this one was just a little screwed up where um, the joint came together right here. So I wanted to put an, another piece on and try to fix that joint there. What I got here is, this is my bandsaw. It's got a cast iron table on it. And if I take my straight edge, perfectly flat, of course. Okay. So I use this to glue fretboards onto the guitar necks because what can happen if, if you don't got something flat to clamp it to, if you start clamping the wood, it can start um, making the wood bend different ways and when it's dry, it'll dry crooked. If I take this neck and set it on this piece of cast iron that's perfectly straight, and take my F clamp, clamp it on like this, and I don't have to worry about whether or not the um, the neck's going to be straight. I know that I would clamp it down here, the neck's going to be perfectly straight. So I can put a clamp every couple frets, the whole length of this fretboard, let it dry, give it an hour or so to dry, take it off, and I know my neck's going to be perfectly straight. The fretboard's going to be perfectly straight. I'm ready to glue my fretboard on. And what I've done is taken a piece of masking tape and put it down the center of the neck. Now, the reason I do that is I put my glue on and before I put my fretboard on, I'll peel this piece of tape off. And that leaves enough room on each side of this slot whenever the, the fretboard's clamped down. You're gonna have what's called squeeze out. And it should squeeze over almost to the edge of this without actually going into it and gluing your truss rod together, which wouldn't be good because then your truss rod will fall down. Um, this is the glue I'm using, Gorilla Wood Glue. Um, I just picked this up one day and used it and it worked. So. I got two bottles of it, so I'm gonna use it till it's done. I usually use Tight Bond, Tight Bond, Tight Bond 2. Um, but this stuff works just as good as that. I am getting ready to put a jack hole in here. So we're gonna use a paddle bit, a 7 8 inch paddle bit. And what I'm gonna do is probably put it like kind of centered in between the ends, kind of put it in the middle, and about here. We'll measure down from the top. Get a mark, kind of get a mark over this way and get an X on there so we know where our center hole's at. Because I don't want to go ahead and, and just eyeball it and drill it in and then, then it be too high or too low. This way it doesn't really matter that much. But if it's too high, then the um, the jack plate will stick up past this rounded piece. Or if it's too low, it sticks down there. As you see on the side of the body here, I um, got my center line. I got an X mark right here. And it's not dead center between these two, but where the cavity is, and everything and how the pots and stuff set that's about where I wanted to put it at okay so we're back from drilling our jack hole out and there it is and we ended up drilling the whole way through um you can see on that side there where the cavity is so that's going to be about all we're going to get done today to this guitar um, we got the jack hole put into it and the body is real close to just getting sanded down and primer I think it's like one more thing we got to do this um, control cavity cover and then this body right here on the hole. Um, 
the neck, I glued the fretboard onto the neck, but I forgot to hit record, so I didn't get none of the footage on that. So it's sitting over there drying right now. Um, and that's about it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in another video.